Yo, I'm gonna delete the Postgres directory on DB2. Should be safe. Yeah, yeah. Classic. That sounds good to me. I'm oh, is this actual? Command. Hold on, is this actual? At 6 p.m. UTC, a beautiful day in Silicon Valley, work was going on as usual at GitLab HQ. Do we know the, per the person that's making this uh, video, Kevin Fang? Uh, hit subscribe, by the way. Hit subscribe, everybody, and press like on the video. Do we know, like, is, does this person work? Does Kev, does Kev work at GitLab? It was a real event a few years back. I know that's why I'm questioning, because it looks like there's a lot of, like, good stuff. I'm very curious. For, uh, poor Kevin. Sounds a bit like Fireship, yeah. Just kidding. GitLab is fully remote. Yep. GitLab is a code-sharing platform just like GitHub, except open source. The hmm, main character nice. of the story, Team Member 1, was about to sign off Stock for the footage, day, not actually him. unaware of the <laughs> disaster that was ahead. He was working in UTC time, so one of these countries, unfortunately... <laughs> Isn't UTC time all the places? Really, when you think about it, it's supposed to be universal time? His evening was interrupted at 6 p.m. when he was paged in for high database load. After scrolling through the dashboards, he saw that the total number of snippets was rising dramatically and assumed the root cause was spam. This yep. was a fair assumption as GitLab had been experiencing similar spam issues in the past week, just less severe. Over the hours, the team attempted to block okay, certain nice, spam nice. IPs as well. This is a terrible problem to have, especially like right on the weekend. This is just a terrible problem to have. Oh my goodness. Uh, but that sucks. Like, this guy... I can't believe we live in a world where people spend time and money to hurt somebody else on the interwebs. I don't know. I still have just a hard time in general with that entire notion. It's just... It's just wild. Clueless? I'm clueless. Let's find Let's out. delete spam users. Okay, 9 By 9 p.m., they were alerted to the database having an elevated number of locks. I mean, classic. Whenever write transactions are made to a record, it will enforce mm -hmm. a lock, forcing further writes to the record to wait for the first one to finish. This ensures that the writes do not interfere with each other. More spam, more writes, more locks, more latency. The engineers continue to search for other sources of stock footage. Again, not actually him, everybody, just in case you're wondering. Um... All right, the engineer. Okay, so here we go. This is. Spam, I like this where this uh, is going. Team member one said he was going to sign off as it was getting late. Suddenly, a different Wake up early went to... off. This time for database what? replication lag. GitLab had two databases, a primary one and a secondary replica. Users okay. will write to the primary database, db1.cluster.gitlab.com, which will forward the same write to the secondary, db2. The second cluster database com. cluster was in standby and only used for failover purposes. So it on it honestly just sounds like a cluster. F this, I feel like these are like the worst possible issues, when, on a Friday when people don't even want to be there later in the day. And like everything starts breaking, right? Like everything starts going wrong. I feel like I've I've had I've had a similar experience to this, where everything goes wrong and it's just like failure bleeds into failure, bleeds into failure, and it just feels like, man, this is this is rough. Lesson they've learned in the past where DB1 was a single point of failure. The process of forwarding the identical writes to DB2 is called replication. Yeah. And over four gigabytes of data in DB1 failed to replicate in DB2. Oof. This was a novel issue without proper documentation, so team member one stayed online to support the team. Damn. The database they used was PostgreSQL, which had a command PG base backup to yep. create a backup from a live database. The plan was to remove the existing incomplete data on DB2 and to I run like PG base backup to copy the current DB1 data to- There we go. Not fixing any problems, but- you know, or fixing any sources of problems, but most certainly fixing some problems. Feels good, okay? They're making progress here. I like DB2. I probably would have done something similar, maybe. From there. According to the plan, team member one SSH'd onto DB2, removed the existing data, and attempted to run the command. At first, the command would just hang, seemingly doing nothing. But after retrying, the command complained that DB1 did not have enough replication clients. Mm. No problem. Team member one proceeded to SSH onto DB1 and increased this value in the config. Upon attempting to reload Postgres, it complained that there were too many open connections, which happens when max connections is set too high. 
He lowered this value, and this time the settings applied without issue. Going back to DB2, he ran. <sighs> just the fact that you can have, you can just raw dog access. The, f the fact that he is literally going between terminals right now, just like my cackles are up. And you're just feeling bad because you know that the – like, one time I deleted my home directory, okay? And it's not – I would like to say I'm a semi-talented engineer. It happens, okay? Like, sometimes you make mistakes. It just happens. And to be bobbling around between two separate terminals, one where it's like – Totally don't oopsie daisy one terminal and totally you can it's okay other ter oh man I'm also comp I have I've never heard this story so this is very 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 exciting PG base back up again and once more it appeared to just hang and do nothing at this point frustration began to kick in the engineers thought perhaps the prior attempts to run base backup before the configuration changes had created some buggy files in the data directory interfering with the current run. The oh fix no. would be to remove these files and oh try no. again. Oh no. Well, might as well give it a shot, thought team member one. A hard reset to start on a clean slate, so to say. Oh he no. prepared the command to rmrf the directory and ran it in his shell no! Immediately after pressing enter, he noticed the shell in which he ran the command was the one connected to the live production DB1. He slams control C harder than he ever had before, but it was too late. Of the over 300 gigabytes of data, only 4.5 was left. <laughs> if you recall, DB2 was previously wiped of data before running the backup command. GitLab now officially had zero data in any of their production database servers. Guys, I may have just accidentally deleted <laughs> DB1. <laughs> oh, well, good golly. What a way to end a Friday evening. You what? I just RMRF'd DB1 out of existence. This, please tell me this is right, real. Looks like we need a call for some backup. <laughs> the team scrambled to find a backup of the production data. They checked for the database backups that were supposed to be uploaded to S3, but there was nothing there. Ooh. Then they checked for disk snapshots, but they found they didn't actually take these snapshots oh. for their database servers, as they assumed the other backup procedures were sufficient. Oh. Lastly, they checked for logical volume snapshots or backups of the file system. GitLab had a staging database for testing, which periodically captured snapshots from DB1 to remain up to date with prod. These snapshots were normally captured once every 24 hours, but luckily team member one had taken a snapshot six hours before the outage. Oh, okay. Now there were two choices. They could copy either the entire LVM snapshot or just the Postgres data directory from staging to prod. The amount of data was similar in both options, but they opted to copy the data directory as that would be easier to restore from. Problem was, their staging environment used Azure Classic in a different region without premium storage, which they could not retroactively upgrade, therefore limiting data transfer rates to around 60 megabits per second. Copying the data to production took a solid 18 hours, and nearly 24 hours later, GitLab was back up to normal operation. The only caveat was that all database data, such as projects, issues, and snippets created in the six hours between the LVM snapshot and the outage were permanently lost. The as you are <laughs> who, who uses as you are <laughs> oh my goodness imagine being a billion dollar company and you can't go faster than 60 megabits a second. Like, imagine being in that position. Be like, well, just, I'll give you $100,000 right now. And they're like, sorry, rules, rules are rules. Can't upgrade you. Nothing we can do about it. Sorry.
This affected around 5,000 projects, 5,000 comments, and 700 users. <laughs> During the backup restore process, progress was tracked in a publicly visible Google Doc, and they even had a recovery stream on YouTube. Post-incident, okay, cool. it was discovered cool. that the replication lag was actually caused by a background job trying to delete a GitLab employee's account due to it being reported for abuse by a troll in combination with the other spam. Postgres maintains right ahead. It was, it was even part of the original problem. Oh my goodness, that is so awesome. Oh, that is so good. Head logs on disk. Every operation is first written to these logs before being applied to the database. This way, if the database crashes and restarts in the middle of a database edit, the logs can be used to restore the database to a consistent state. More pertinent to the issue at hand, write ahead logs are also sent to DB2 for replication. There is a maximum disk usage configured for these, so old logs will be deleted when the limit is reached. Nice. The large okay. employee removal operation plus the spammers caused so many operations that logs which hadn't been sent to DB2 yet were deleted, thereby causing DB2 to become permanently out of sync. They also discovered that the database backups weren't uploaded to S3 because the server which was taking the database backups was using the wrong version of Post. This is so funny. Oh, oh my goodness. Who even really needs types? Do we even need types in programming languages when there's these kind of errors? Okay, this is where all the real errors happen anyways. Come on. Postgres. These failures should have sent warning emails, but they never received any of them because they forgot to enable DMARC authentication on the backup server. Logging onto production servers, Ooh. changing configs, and running random untested commands is obviously not the best situation to be in, but it's good practice to let someone else review exactly what command you're running and where you're running it before you run it for real. How many? I do think that that is really, really important, which if you're going to RMRF on a production server, especially one involving data, never hurts to double check. Like it just, it just doesn't, it just never hurts to double check. Ever. How many times have you asked someone a question only to immediately realize what the answer was or submit a pull request yep. and immediately find 300 bugs that you overlooked? Yep. When you're in the zone, it's easy to tunnel vision and make mistakes. A mental risk. That second one, actually, that second one is such a good observation. Do you look at your own pull requests? There, I find the most amount of problems with my code when I look at my pull request, not in my editor. Right, I always look at the diff first because it just helps me see it in a whole new. Like I, I don't know, ugh, I don't know what it is, but when I make a PR, looking at it in the PR view like enables a whole new brain mode. Right, it's like find the shit mode. Whereas like the other ones like make it. This one's like find. It's like a completely different brain mode. And then for whatever reason, I see things I could never see looking at the code. I highly advise against it. Never, never look at your own code. Bugs that okay. you overlooked. When you're in the zone, it's easy to tunnel vision and make mistakes. A mental reset or a second pair of eyes is always helpful. Yep. But the yep. only reason they had to go through all these shenanigans is because this replication lag scenario was never tested or well documented. Mm. No one on the call mm. was familiar with how PG base backup worked and how it was actually normal behavior for it to hang for a bit. So in fact, all they had to do was wait and everything would have been fine. Thorough load testing could have also exposed this replication-like issue before it occurred in prod. But it's possible their staging environment didn't off. have the same primary secondary setup as production. Nothing's worse than it's successful. You, you aired successfully. Like, oh, oof, oof. Such an oof. Which is a problem in and of itself. Next, after DB1 was deleted, they found that many of their backups were broken. These backup steps, or more generally, all rarely run or used procedures, should be manually or automatically tested on a somewhat frequent basis. Mm -hmm. Months or years can go by without any need to restore from backup, but when disaster strikes and someone accidentally deletes the database, the documented procedure better actually work. 
On paper, their recovery story looked fine, but if someone had tested all of them, they would have found that 1. doesn't actually work, 2. would take 18 hours to restore from, 3. didn't exist, and 4. would only work if one of the databases was still alive. Lastly, the straw which blew the databases back, the deletion of the GitLab employee's account. So during and before- That is just- that, that what is this? What is this deletion? What is this deletion business? I want to. I wonder what that employee was doing. For the incident, when a GitLab user is removed for spam, the software would perform a synchronous delete on all the user data. So if the user had 50 million projects, all of them will be deleted immediately. The change they proposed was to instead soft delete by marking the user as deleted, and then the real delete can be done asynchronously and in a controlled manner. Yeah, what is that? So, guy, I would uh, uh, for those that haven't seen this, what is the fate you think is going to happen? Is team member one getting RMRF'd himself? Remain promoted. Died. Which one? Type one uh, here. One in the chat for fired. Two in the chat for remained. Three in the chat for promoted. Four in the chat for died. Died of natural heart problems from this. Okay, most people think just remained. Remained or promoted. All right. And then some died. Some people die. Okay. Okay. This is looking good. I like this. I like where this is going. A lot of deaths and remaining. Remaining dead. In the end, team member one was obviously not fired. There were but many factors, it, which... Did it just say maybe an annual reward? In the end... Please don't fire team member one, but maybe create an annual award in his name. <laughs> Team member one was obviously not fired. There were many factors which led to that RMRF moment, and many more factors which led to it taking 18 hours to recover from there, none of which were a single person's fault. GitLab CEO personally apologized Aww. for the outage, and GitLab never accidentally deleted their production database ever again. That's That's pretty good. Don't accidentally delete the database. Wait, what? <laughs> what? That was pretty good. I liked that. I liked that. Very good. All right, I got to go pee. I'll be right back.